What's up, everyone? We're back for another episode of Locked On Bucks on what was a historic day, I think, for the franchise. I think we can call it that. By now, everyone would have seen the photos and maybe seen some of the clips that the Bucks have put up and the players from their visit to the White House. Actually, the first team, and I forgot about this, but the first team to go to the White House since 2016, uh, LeBron and the crew back then. I read that. I, I forgot that. I assume that's correct. Anyway, I've just led with the show with it, so hopefully it is. But we're going to discuss the Bucks visiting the White House. A big game with the Sixers coming up tomorrow. And there was a bit of an injury bombshell, particularly or a health bombshell with the Philadelphia 76ers there. Their injury list is actually bigger than the Bucks, which is hard to believe. So we're going to get to that. Uh, and then also just some reaction from a pod yesterday. Someone said that we were just searching for clips, uh, for clicks, Justin. It's unbelievable. Anyway, we're going to get to all of, to, get to all of that on today's show. So let's get started. You are Locked On Bucks, your daily Milwaukee Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Bucks. I'm your host, Kane Pittman. You can see and hear me on this show daily and also find my words over at ESPN and NBA Australia and joining me from the Bucks Radio Network as he regular does, regularly does, Justin Garcia. I'm struggling to talk to start this show. It's been a rough start for me. I'm not going to start it again, though. We're going to uh, push through here. But today's episode is brought to you by rockauto.com. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them Locked On sent you. So the Bucks. They always schedule this in when they make the trip to Washington. Unfortunately, the Bucs weren't able to pick up a win against the Wizards yesterday, but I still think probably a pretty enjoyable trip to Washington, given the fact that they were able to go to the White House today, uh, Justin. And this this happened when I was sleeping in Australia. You know, I, I didn't get up for it, but I certainly caught up on all the clips, saw all the photos. And I'll be honest, and this might just be me being Australian, being an, being an outsider when it comes to the intrigue of going to the White House, but I, I sort of was like, eh, I don't really care. Like, going to the White House, to, uh, well, it's, it's not a big deal for me. But seeing the, the players' faces and their reactions and everyone else, not just the players, but the staff, the coaching staff, and everyone else that travels with the team being able to go there and do this today, I must admit it, it did dawn on me a little bit as I was going through all the footage that this was obviously a pretty momentous day uh, for a lot of these individuals and the path that they've taken to get there, but also the franchise. And it's a continuation of a weird season. And I was describing this earlier when I jumped on with uh, Peter Bukowski on the Locked On Today podcast that the Bucks are like losing a, a few games at the moment and it feels like this season is sputtering along. But in the meantime, they've had a ring ceremony. They've now visited the White House. They've got uh, teammates that are coming to town and collecting their rings as well. So it's just a, it's, when you're the champs, when you're the defending champs, it's a weird regular season campaign you have to go through. Yeah, and uh, I knew it had, had, had been some time since uh, there was a, a team visiting the White House, but you forget uh, how long it had been that uh, four years, you know, that we think to, oh, it's the first time since, and, and we always point to the pandemic, but um, four years since a team, NBA team visited the White House for uh, winning the championship. So that is, um, it's one of those things that makes it even more special. And it just gets you to reflect on the past summer even more. And, you know, what this team was able to accomplish winning the championship and, and reflecting on that title. Um, that's what I look back on. And, you know, it was, um, I think it, it was a neat experience for a lot of guys that, obviously for the Bucks to be the first team to get there. But you think about guys around the league too that haven't had this chance in quite some time. And even uh, our own Dave Kane was telling me <laughs> he didn't get a chance to go with Virginia because of the pandemic. So mm -hmm. he part of him felt guilty that he gets to go on the White House trip and, and be a part of that, but then pointed out, well, I didn't get to go for Virginia when we won a championship. So this kind of makes up for it. And, you know, there's Dave and there's other people in, in similar boats where – this felt like one of the first kind of breakthroughs of, all right, we're shifting back into the old routine and some of the things that were uh, normal, we're reintroducing here and, and things like visiting the White House are certainly along those lines. So those watching on YouTube saw me quickly run away there. And the reason I ran away was to pick up this book, uh, Giannis 
from Miran Freider, who is, you know, I think a lot of our listeners would have read this book or at least have their hands on a copy and we'll get to it. Uh, because when I spoke about the fact that I probably didn't understand the magnitude of the experience today for a number of these players, and again, everyone's got their stories, you know, Bobby Portis with, with I think everyone's fallen in love with, the, you know, what he's gone through from a, from a personal standpoint to a basketball standpoint, getting to the White House. By the way, uh, Bobby Portis, Looked absolutely fantastic, by the way. Look at this photo here. Bobby Potus, he just looks unbelievable in this suit. He's got the specs on. You know, um, it, it makes you want to see him wear rec specs when he's playing man. on the court now. Just get the old school 80s rec specs with the band around. Man, he looks so good. So shout out to Bobby Portis. But uh, the reason I, I held up this book is because it, it did, you know, I, I couldn't help. And, and we always gravitate towards Giannis and Thanasis. And that whole entire family, as as we always have since the, they've come to Milwaukee. But I'm reading this book at the moment. It took a while to get out to Australia. I've, I've got a couple of chapters left here. And I, I don't think if you followed Giannis and the story closely for, since he's been in Milwaukee the last eight plus years, I, I haven't found myself exactly like reading this story and thinking, wow, this is like something I've never heard of before or anything like that. Like it there's certainly details and stuff like that and it's beautifully written i mean it's it's she's she's an mirror is an incredible writer no doubt but i think the fact that i'm reading this book right now and going through it all and going through the process right now and then saw that today and saw yana speak about uh you know obviously his family and where they came from uh you know the, the president was talking about him and thanasis the fact that he's there and costas has got a, a championship ring as well i think like going reading that at the time and then seeing that made me appreciate it and, and just feel so happy for those guys that they got to experience that together and and you know it, it's crazy i mean Giannis shouted out the the bucks fans for you know supporting the team when they were the the worst team in the league and now he's the guy he's the guy making the speech and obviously spoke so well uh, at the white house today it's um you know it, it's incredible and it, it's just another i guess piece of the story for Giannis and the one thing you learn whether you're reading the book whether you're just following whether you watch today there's going to be more to come there's going to be more to come for him but uh yeah well it's just just special to to see both Giannis and Thanasis there together and some of the photos they took uh clearly um a, a pretty special day for those two there and, and and there's a photo of those two guys with the championship rings as well incredible it's incredible yeah and um what was I think President Biden how did he put it that uh Giannis, you and your brother won the gene pool. <laughs> you look at those two, and, and as you said, two coasts with a championship. But, you know, we obviously know his story, and basketball fans know his story, and there was more um, that was brought more to attention during the finals and with Mirren's book, too, over the summer. But things like this, I mean, you, you it's hard to imagine that there's somebody that's not familiar with Giannis' story at this point just because of – his personality and how likable he is and the success that he's had and a Disney movie that's coming out. But this stuff just, um, you know, expands his audience even more that you have people that aren't even sports fans and hear the backstory about this guy and telling his journey of hard work and working and coming to America and, and going to Greece as an immigrant as well. And, and everything he did to get to where he is. So it's just another opportunity where we get to share Giannis with you know not just basketball fans but the world now that they get introduced to him if they weren't already familiar with that backstory so i was also just casting my eye through the photo and there was a few little bits that stood out to me obviously dante divincenzo had a bow tie on he was looking fantastic and boy did he get a big shout out in fact biden like wanted to talk about Giannis, but then he got completely distracted and derailed by the conversation about divincenzo being from delaware and so yeah, Dante DiVincenzo is actually the first player that uh, that the, the president spoke about. So there you go. Uh, I think uh, Brooke Lopez was joking with Do uh, DiVincenzo after about started Dante and all the different names they have. Uh, Dante suggested presidential uh, yeah. DiVincenzo, which I'm not sure if Malcolm Brogdon is going to uh, take that as a, as a slight. But anyway, the other part that I thought was cool, uh, a lot of the, the people that deserve you know a, a lot of credit and 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 they're not on the floor it's not bud it's not the the assistant coaches finn baker and darvin ham that everyone knows so the training staff obviously i love suki hobson we she's such a lovely person she's done such great things doesn't probably get the credit that she deserves my aussie mate uh andrew small on the training staff he's i saw him up there it's it's crazy to see people that you know or you you've you've you know, worked, not worked with, but but been in that, that locker room that, that don't get a lot of the credit, they're there um, as well. So overall, 
I didn't expect to think this was as cool as what I thought it was in the end. And part of that was just seeing the enjoyment that the the people there got out of it. And and everyone knows that I'm a, I, you know, Greg Popovich said I was a selfish reporter. So yes, I was actually found myself in the end, surprisingly, a little bit jealous that I wasn't there. Eric was there. Jim yeah, Eric was, was there. there. Jim was there. So, uh, you know, shout out to those guys, Stephen Watson, uh, all those guys. Yeah. So yeah, so I found myself a little bit jealous in the end. Yeah, everybody but you and me were there. And incredible, so, incredible. So, and the listeners. Yeah. I mean, they should have just got the yeah. locked on box of listeners yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing? We maybe maybe next time. I mean, uh, I, I think it was it was Lazary that said maybe they'll go back eight times. I'm not hundred percent sure about that, but hey, maybe we'll get our opportunity. Did did he frame it as not one, not two, not three, not I four? Think, I think he went straight to four and then then to eight from there. So anyway. Uh, look, that ownership group has had some pretty outrageous uh, public comments about what they think is going to come in the past, and it worked out. So who's going to doubt them? But True Bill is something I want to talk about now. True Bill is a new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, want, or simply forget about. And I'm telling you, like I'm one of those people that desperately needs this, whether it's, it's gym memberships that I find out a year later I've been paying for, uh, whatever subscription I have, and, and then you know you check your bank account and you're like, okay, I've been paying 30 bucks a month for this for the last year. But anyway... On average, people save up to 720 bucks per year with True Bill. Because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, True Bill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and True Bill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And your True Bill concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. True Bill has over 2 million users and helped save. Uh, saves over $100 billion. So don't fall for subscription scans. Start canceling today at truebill.com slash locked on NBA. Go right now, truebill.com slash locked on NBA. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash locked on NBA. And uh, and then after you do that, after you take care of your bills that you're, you're paying for there, you can go to prize picks. Because Prize Picks has the best NBA DFS prop game on the market. Prize Picks offers more NBA props than any other DFS prop operator and offers all the superstar players as well as bench players, only recording a handful of minutes each game. Prize Picks allows mixed sports entries. You can take the over on LeBron combined with the under on Mahomes in the same entry. I tell you what, the under on Mahomes, maybe not something that people were doing a lot in previous years, but perhaps they are this year. So don't hesitate. Check out prizepicks.com and use the promo code NBA or go to your app store and download the app today. Price Picks is a daily fantasy made easy. I love it, and I know you will too. So as we keep rolling here, one other question I had before we move on from the White House stuff. Uh, we've got a photo here. Uh, all these photos are from the Bucks Twitter account, by the way. See this jersey that's being held up here. Do you think it was honoring Aaron Baines with the number 46 there? Is that why he's got the 46, or am I missing something as a as a foreigner? It's not the 46 president, is he? Or is that or is that a, is that is that truly for Aaron Baines? Uh, it's I think it's partial. It's partially Aaron Baines, <laughs> and uh, it is for him being the 46th no. president. Also, uh, nobody looked like they belonged there more than Brooke. Like he oh. just looked so good and put together there that you, you picture Brooke working in the White House and holding a position in the Oval Office that he looked like he belongs in that building every single day of the week. Yeah, there's no question about it. And sometimes you look at Brook Lopez on the bench, who have his legs crossed, and he doesn't really look like a basketball player. <laughs> the same player. photo at the White House. Too. He, he needs the suit on. So they were all looking super sharp. Giannis had a, a beautiful black suit on. No Nike tech fleece. Incredible. It takes a special occasion for him uh, not to have that on. So the thing for the Bucks is, though, that they, they quickly have to move on here, straight back on the court, and... It's a game against the Philadelphia Sixers on the road. Then they have the New York Knicks on the road. So part of our podcast yesterday, we spoke about the fact that, or the headline of the podcast was, uh, where's the panic meter on the Bucks or something of that nature. And we had one YouTube comment that was just like, geez, you guys are really fishing for clicks. <laughs> but I tell you what, if you check my mentions after the game, I'd say that the, the panic meter is slightly starting to rise. We spoke about the fact that it, it's, not, it's not that there's any thought that the Bucs, if they're fully healthy, won't be one of the best teams in the NBA. We all believe that. I mean, but but the point is, when you go on one of these long road trips, you dig yourself a hole and, you know, you can find yourself in a point where, okay, well, this this feels like a bit of a wasted season. Now, they're four and six, so they're clearly not there yet. As we discussed on the show, 
yesterday that it's you know that time when you start to feel that way is probably Christmas the new year if things haven't improved you're sliding you're still 10 games below 500 whatever it may be so we're not there yet so I, I would push back that we're fishing for clips but it's just uh, for clicks it's just a bit of a bit of a heat check of the fan base and see where everyone is at but yeah. this game this game against the Philadelphia 76ers not to cut you off but this is a game that I would say, look, the Bucs are probably going to lose. If the injury report is as it is, there's no Middleton playing, there's no Brook Lopez playing in this game. But all of a sudden, we find out today that Joel Embiid tested positive to COVID. Tobias Harris has already tested positive to COVID. Matisse Dybal is also in the health and, and safety protocol. So this is a severely diminished Philadelphia 76ers roster right now. And the same with Chris Milton. I mean, hopefully, these guys are doing okay. I mean, that's, that's the first part of all this. I mean, a guy like Joel Embiid, I don't think that he needs any other health concerns. Obviously, you know, you'd prefer that he didn't have COVID. That's for damn sure. But if you look at it from a Barcelona point of view, all of a sudden, this is a game the Bucs can't afford to lose. Yeah, I mean, there's still um, – it's still like three games that separates – the Bucs, I think, are 10th, and then the Celtics and um, and Hawks are down there with them too, that it's still like three games separating two through – 13 or or 12 in the Eastern Conference. So they're still bunched up quite a bit. I think you just don't want an 0-5 road trip that I I think the tricky part is we still don't have any clear timetables for Brooke or for Chris Middleton that you know, we don't know if there's symptoms, if Chris has been sick with this or, or what's going on there. So you can't really compare this because it affects everybody differently, but – I've kind of taken the approach of, well, you were without Drew Holiday for three weeks last year, and we know Drew said he was pretty sick with it. So just plan on three weeks that Chris is going to be out with this, you know? And if that's the case, it's going to be midway through the homestand that he comes back. So if you can get him back at some point during the homestand and you go two and three on this road trip, even one and four, and then you can make up some ground because I feel like we've said this quite a bit, but – um once they return home, it does get significantly easier where there's two of the Magic, the Pistons, who knows who's going to be playing for the Lakers as well. So the schedule goes in your favor once you you get home for those five games. Just don't go 0-5 on the road is how I approach it. Um, you know, I've kind of started to ask the same thing about your level of concern or panic, and it's been under the guise of, you guys aren't panicked yet, right? Like we shouldn't, we shouldn't quite be there, but I do think there is some merit to, you know, what you said a couple of minutes ago and what Bud has tried to tell us for the last couple of games of look, injuries are not, we're not playing really good right now. That that's the big issue to me is you can't point to, you don't have this guy or this guy or this guy. And it's great to say you're down four starters or three starters. It doesn't matter who's on the court when we're making some of these mistakes and we're doing some of these things we typically don't do. So I wouldn't say panic, and I think even if you lose this game, it's it's discouraging. But to me, it's you know, it's just tough to get any type of read on this team until you get to the point where it's just one of the two, Brooke or Chris out, where you're dealing with just one guy that's out. You can't really tell what this team is, and I think you usually look at around 25 or so games before you form an opinion, and. Now, this year it could be like 30, 35 that we're talking about around Martin Luther King Day of like, okay, now I'm starting to figure out who this team is and they'll play a lot better in the second half. I mean, you were helped out tonight that the Sixers and Heat both lost and the whole Joel Embiid and, and Sixers situation, which we should also say it's it's kind of a marvel that the Bucks aren't in that boat where you saw what it did to Philadelphia that was kind of ripple effects where Tobias Harris goes in and then a couple of days later, Tybal and now Joel Embiid. So far, it's just been contained to Chris Middleton. I mean, could you imagine with the injuries they have if that would have spread to other players as well? You know, if anything goes wrong between now and the game, you're going to be held fully responsible for that comment. So I just want to make sure you're aware of what you just said. But anyway, you're right, though. And the only the only point I'll make as we, we close this out, and again, yeah, maybe maybe panic is, is the wrong word. But the reason why I say they, they want to win this is because if you're a team that's disadvantaged by injuries, which the Bucks clearly are right now, injuries slash health concerns, then if you come up against a team that 
fully healthy would probably give you a whooping at home, which the Sixers probably would if the Bucks had their current lineup in. That's fine to admit that. Then you have to take advantage of that. And if they win this game tomorrow, they're back to five and six. Okay, that's fine. See how you go in New York the next day. I would imagine that the Bucks aren't beating the Knicks at the Garden on a back-to-back if the status of everyone stays the same right now. So that's kind of what I'm getting at, keeping in mind that you've got Boston and Atlanta still to come on this road trip. So at four and six, you might be sitting back and saying, I don't really care. Four and six isn't too bad. Okay, what about four and eight? All right, what happens if they lose the Celtics at all? Four and ten? If I got your attention now at four and ten? Mm-hmm. So that's all that's we're getting at here. And keeping in mind that at the same time, in these losses, you've got Giannis playing 39 minutes with the majority of those coming at the five as well, which is clearly also a concern. So it all just starts to build up, and that's when it can be hard to recover. So that's that's the purpose of the question, because if you're not going to have these guys for a while, you have to figure out how you can win games with the players. They've still got a number of good players in the team. Bobby Portis is obviously going to come to good health. Certainly Drew Holiday, who's been rusty so far. So I wanted to, I wanted to mention something about lineups. Because Lisa Byington said something interesting on the broadcast, or there was an interesting moment on the broadcast the other day. And she was right, by the way. She was 100% right. But I want to get to that after we discuss rockauto.com. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure off the pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing only the brands their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. So save time and money by using Rock Auto. They've got everything you need, brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, even new carpet. So just go and explore their easy-to-use website today to find out the solution to your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box that they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. All right, so this game against Washington was starting to look a little bit sketchy in the third quarter. Uh, Funnily enough, at halftime, I was almost... I don't don't tweet too much during the games anymore. Um, I just don't feel like I'm adding too much unless I see something that, that, that I think is worthwhile mentioning. Not in the arena anymore, Justin. You're not seeing any insights that people at home aren't seeing. So I try to tweet less and just watch the game and take it all in. But at halftime, I almost tweeted yesterday, gee, the Bucks are winning and Giannis hasn't been at his dominant best. This is a nice sign. You're getting some contributions from other players. Bobby Portis was a maniac in the first quarter. Grayson Allen continued his strong play. And in the third quarter, it started to get a little bit ragged. And just as the wheels started to get a little bit wobbly, Bud made a lineup change where Giannis went out of the game. I was going to say, I think I know what you're referring to. Drew Holiday went out of the game. And you had a lineup out on the floor. I think it was like Thanasis, Shemi Ojale was out there. Justin Robinson was out there. Either way, not the lineup that gives you any confidence that offensively the team's going to be able to turn things around. And I think the first possession was Justin Robinson didn't take a pass. Uh, sort of dribbled into a mid-range, missed it, and whatever. I don't blame him for that. He's he's one of the only guys in that lineup that can create for themselves. So I'm not having to go at Justin Robinson. But Lisa Byington sort of questioned the decision to go to that lineup at that stage. And she framed it as sort of asking Marcus Johnson, and it went silent for about <laughs> it went silent yeah. for about four seconds. And and then Marcus was like, well. You have, to, you have to get rest for these guys at some point. And Lisa was like, we're not all at the same time. And right. she was right. She was right. But again, I, uh, this is symptomatic, Justin, of where we're at. I, I don't necessarily blame yeah. Bud for that. I, Lisa, I think, is right. I mean, it's not a preferable lineup. I just don't know mm-hmm. what you do. That's where they're at. Yeah, I I rewatched the game uh, afterwards and listened and, you know, was able to listen to the, the TV call since during the actual game. I'm in the studio listening to Dave in the radio call. Right. And it was funny re-watching that part and hearing Lisa phrase it to Marcus. Yeah. And Marcus kind of left there with the, what do you want me to do with this and, and give a diplomatic approach? But then finally in the end conceding, yeah, no, we probably shouldn't have all of these guys yeah. off the yeah. floor at the same time. Now to Bud's credit, I think it was only a four to nothing run uh, that the Wizards went on where he realized, okay, this is going to be eight or yeah. 10 to nothing in no time. So Let's get one of those guys back out there. Um, But yeah, I mean, that's kind of, we've talked about it on the radio broadcast too, of um, during the most recent homestand, 
they were kind of in a similar spot where, you know, when Chris was playing and Drew was still out and Brooke was out, it had kind of got to the point where it was almost like a split squad team that Bud's rotation was Giannis, you'll play with this group. And then Chris, you're going to come out there and you'll play with this group that it was limiting the minutes that they were playing together. And, and, you know, just because of the injuries, that's kind of where this team is at. So that's a, the tough part of what do you really do? Because, you know, Marcus is right. You got to get these guys rest. And I think, you know, Bud has already talked about not just Giannis, but Giannis played 39 minutes in that game. And you can tell he that's not optimal right now for Bud. But also he's talked about George Hill and Pat Connaughton and other guys that are having to play a lot more minutes right now than you would have hoped for and that he, you know, he certainly would have planned on this early in the season. And it, it's just one of those no win situations where you got to do it. But I, I think to Bud's credit, he recognized, all right, we still have a chance. We got to end this and I got to figure out a different substitution pattern and, and stagger this a little more. And the unfortunate part of that is it means you don't have those minutes where Giannis is playing with Drew or playing, you know, with some of those other guys when you're fully healthy because of having to stagger those minutes like that, that you can't run into minutes where there's no Giannis and no Drew Holiday and no Bobby Portis on the court. So that means you kind of have to have guys, um, you know, kind of pick their own team where like when you scrimmage your own team in, in the open gym of I'll take this guy, this guy, and this guy, and Bobby, you take those guys and, and Drew, and that's how we're going to have to split it up. Yeah, and that's why I would push back too heavily on any criticism of part of the rotations right now because – uh, and and let's not forget, Drew Holiday was on a minutes restriction as well. I don't think they would have wanted to push him to 30 in that game in a perfect scenario, but they kind of had to because they don't have... So, you, so you're missing two of your top four. Then the third guy is on a minutes restriction. If you say DiVincenzo is your fifth best player, whatever, people might argue that. But, but so, okay. So that's the situation. And the advanced numbers with Giannis on the floor this year have been dominant. So this is where you get yourself into a situation where it's like, okay, how, how much can we actually play this guy? Again, they've got a back-to-back -back coming here tomorrow without Lopez, without Middleton. So it'll be interesting to see where they push the minutes. You would love for the Bucs to be able to run up a lead. We'll see. It's going to be difficult on the road. I, I don't know if I see that potentially happening. But that's why it's so hard. And offensively for this team right now, we spoke about the defensive numbers. We know that they're missing uh, Brook Lopez for sure. But offensively, to me, they just don't have a pressure release valve at the moment because Chris Milton is so often that guy where it's like, okay, Giannis, you can take a couple of possessions off here. We know those two guys are dominant in the pick and roll, but we can also just give the ball to Chris. All right, you work into a shot, take your mid-range difficult shot, knock it down, give Giannis a couple of possessions to rest. Because I think you're seeing the trickle-down effect of obviously uh, Drew Holiday, who's working through some rust. But Frank mentioned Bobby Portis yesterday taking a lot of shots. But it's not just that he's taking a lot of shots. I think we're also seeing Bobby Portis when he's getting his touches. He's pump faking, taking one dribble and stepping in because the threes that he was knocking down at 47% last year are no longer wide open because the other guys aren't on the floor to allow him to be the fourth and fifth guy. He's the second scorer. And same with Grayson Allen, who's been fantastic. But ideally, he's not your second best scorer. Like That, that, yeah. that, that is playing above where you want Grayson Allen to be. So offensively, they just don't have any pressure release right now. Yeah, and, you know, Grayson Allen, not to get way too sidetracked here, I'm just going to be really curious to see what Grayson Allen looks like once his team is fully healthy because you see what he's able to do in, in creating his own shot. But, you know, I've already heard some people talk about, man, I mean, Grayson Allen, we should keep him over Dante or he should start over Dante because look at his ability to score and he's doing this. But, like, let's also keep in mind – who's on the court with Grayson Allen right now that you need him to be scoring around 20 yeah. points at this point with how banged up they are. So um, to me, I'm, I'm curious to see what he looks like once this team is fully healthy, but this is, I mean, we can't state it enough. It's a brutal stretch that they have right now that the injuries are, are one thing here that even if they're healthy, this is a really tough stretch. You have five on the road. It's their longest road trip. Three of the top six teams in the East start that five game road trip. And, you know, the Celtics and Hawks are struggling right now, but those are pretty good teams. You think are, they're going to be yeah. playoff teams at the season's end. So for the next seven weeks, the Bucks have six back to backs in seven weeks. And there's two in one week that they have in there too, once you get into December. So November and December is really, really brutal in terms of scheduling. And that's why I just, keep saying 
it's probably not going to be until like mid January that we see the reins pulled up a little bit and we finally get to figure out who this team is. And maybe that's when they start to be fully healthy and we see a lot of restrictions and rest removed that it, it, it's going to be some time. And I know you've said it and, and everybody's pointed it out. It's probably going to get worse before it gets better. So you just are going to have to have some patience when you look at who's on the court. Yeah, and we should note with the Celtics as well, and this is where, you know, through the course of the regular season, sometimes, you know, luck works with you. Sometimes it works against you. Jalen Brown has a hamstring injury, so he's probably not going to play in that game against the Bucs as well. So another opportunity to maybe get a win and in a game that's slightly easier than it would have been if the Celtics were at full strength. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there uh, with that game as well. We thank you all for making Locked On Bucks your first listen of every single day. Uh, also, check out the Locked On Fantasy podcast with our good friend uh, Josh Lloyd, who is, if you play fantasy, he's the man you want to listen to. He'll tell you what to do with your lineups, who to drop, who to add, who to trade. He'll have you covered with all those. So check it out with Josh. But uh, this game, and I did forget that Daylight Savings has ended. I don't want to trigger anyone by letting them know that that's the case, but the hours have changed here in Australia. So this game, I believe, is at 6.30 Central Time. Bucks and Sixes, is that accurate? That's correct. All right. So we'll be back after that one. It's going to be interesting. No Embiid, no Middleton, no Lopez, no no former Buck Tobias Harris revenge game coming in here. So there's plenty of guys out, but it's a game that the Bucks absolutely have to get. Uh, Justin, we'll be able to hear you, I assume. You will. Uh, me and Dave Kane. So for everybody, well, everybody, period. You can listen on the, the League Pass audio as well. Six o'clock Central Time is when uh, Dave and I will get started. All right. This should be a fun one. We'll be back post-game, uh, front end of a back-to-back. They've got the Knicks the day after at Madison Square Garden. Always fun to watch Giannis at Madison Square Garden, but it does mean uh, back-to-back post-game pods as well after the Sixers and Knicks. I'll try and wrangle in Frank into doing a little back-to-back action, but we'll see how we go with that. But either way, I'll be around. So I'll catch you guys after the Sixers game. Hopefully, the Bucks can get back on track. <laughs>